Hi, my name is Mike, and in this video I'm going to show you how to replace a mini PCIe network card in a laptop. The reason I'm changing this card is because the laptop is experiencing intermittent network connectivity issues. So you can see right now it's connected, um, but it uh, seems to cut in and out. Uh, right now I'll have it, and then I'll just be browsing a website, and then it'll just drop. Um, so as part of uh, refurbishing this laptop, I've already reinstalled the latest version of Windows, and I've tried four different drivers for the Wi-Fi card from Microsoft and from Intel. The card is an Intel 7260, which I've got a lot of experience with. Uh, I also did a little Google searching and verified that this is a common problem with this card. When they work well, they are great. Uh, it's one of the few cards that works in this model laptop, which supports wireless AC speeds. Uh, but they have a pretty high rate of failure. So now that I've determined that the issue is most likely with the card, the first thing I want to do is remove the card from within Device Manager. So to get to that, right-click on PC, Properties, Device Manager, Network Adapters. You can see it here, Intel Dual Band Wireless AC 7260. I'm going to right-click on that. And I'm going to uninstall the device. Now, if you forget to do this, it's not the end of the world. I just like to make sure that it's fully uninstalled and that any software related to that card is removed so that it doesn't interfere with the uh, replacement card. So that's it. You can see it only takes about a second, and then the, the laptop immediately drop the connection. So next I want to shut the laptop down, flip it over, uh, unplug everything and remove the battery. With the laptop upside down, you can see several things across the bottom. This particular laptop, you see some of the original feet have rubbed off, so I've replaced them with these little square bumpers. You can see the docking station connector over here in the center, and directly behind that is the battery, which to remove that, put two tabs, and then it just pops right out. And this is an extended length battery, which provides a longer runtime, that's why it's so large. And the process to do this can be slightly different depending on the model of the laptop that you're working on. Um, Typically, the concept is the same, it's just the screws might be in a little different place. Um, so the wireless card is underneath this bottom cover. So to access that card, I need to remove the bottom cover by removing all of the screws. I've now removed all the screws. Note that while you're doing this, if the screws are different sizes, you probably want to keep them separated, uh, just so you know how to put them back in where they go. Um, usually when I'm doing this, I like to set the laptop on something soft as well. So for example, what I'm using underneath it here, it's just a mouse pad, just to give something soft to rest on so it's not less sitting directly on the lid. So with all those screws out, you can typically just pry the bottom right off. Now that the bottom of the case is removed, you can see the wireless card here. The cords attached to it go to the antennas which are in the lid behind the screen. The hard drive is over here. Some of these other components are the RAM the processor, the GPU chip, and space over here for an additional, uh, this is listing as a SATA flash, you can install the different wireless card here, sometimes there's a, a wireless WAN card over here uh, for uh, cellular modems. With the case open, it's usually a good time to dust everything off with some compressed air. Uh, 
I'll do that a little bit more after I pause the video again. Um, and also with this particular model, it's a good idea to make sure that the screws for the case lid are in tight. And just double check any of the other screws, make sure everything is nice and tight inside of here. It's pretty common for this model that the case lid screws work themselves loose over time, which can cause the lid to become a bit wobbly. So any internal screws, it's usually good to just check them and make sure that they're nice and tight. This particular model does have an upgradable processor. If I wanted to replace the processor, I would just loosen these screws and remove the heatsink fan, which is this one power connector here. Um, some other components that you can see while the case is open, this gray cord uh, goes to the LCD screen and it plugs in right here. Um, this is power for the screen. The uh, AC jack on the back um, is replaceable. So for example if your plug where you plug in your power cord were to become damaged uh, that's a replaceable component. This is a little bit older model laptop. It is a Dell uh, E-Series E6520. Uh, I do like that they are so um, modular that you can replace and upgrade these components in the field if you wanted to. You can even replace the optical drive with a larger capacity battery. So I'm now going to replace the wireless card. So to do that, Disconnect the antennas. Remove one screw. Grab my new card. Another good thing about this being such a modular system, if you wanted to replace the card with a faster one, um, obviously new wireless standards uh, would require a faster card. And you can do this a couple different ways. Sometimes you'll just get a uh, USB uh, wireless card that plugs into the USB port. I like to do it internally. Careful with the little antenna connectors. You don't want to accidentally bend them when you're pushing them on. But you should feel them click on once they're once they're on there. And then to close everything back up is just the reverse of the removal process. Put your lid back on, starting at the bottom or what is the front of the laptop because of how the hinges connect. And then start putting all your screws back in. I usually like to start from the center 
and work my way out if possible. Sometimes there will be specific tightening sequences. If that's the case with the model you're working on, you want to follow any specific sequences it may have. Once the card is replaced and the laptop's closed back up and everything is reinstalled, we can go ahead and power it back on. Once it comes back up, the card should be automatically be detected. If it isn't, you may need to download the drivers from the manufacturer's website or through Windows Update. A couple tips, if it's not automatically detected and you do need to download those drivers, uh, you can just grab yourself a regular Ethernet cord and plug that into your laptop and then plug the other end into your home router. Uh, that'll get you internet. Or another option, if you don't have an Ethernet cord, is to just use something like a USB flash drive and download the drivers on another computer and then just bring that flash drive over, plug it into the system you're working on and install the drivers that way. Now what drivers you use specifically would depend on the card that you installed. Typically those are going to be uh, Intel or Atheros drivers, uh, but that would vary depending on the actual specific model of card that you used. So we'll look over here under network. You'll see some different networks. I'll go ahead and connect to one of these available networks. And once that's connected, one of the last things I'd like to do is run a network speed test. I like to use speedtest.net for this. So you can see on this speed test I'm getting just over 200 megabits per second, which is pretty good for a laptop this old. This is within spec of my home network and internet connection. Typically get a little over 200 on Wi-Fi and a little over 300 on uh, plugged in uh, hardwired devices. So that's all. I uh, hope this video has been helpful to you. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments section. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out a lot. Thanks.